this video, we'll go over ACT math problems to deal with radicals. So the first one says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to 5 over the square root of 7? Now typically, we don't want radicals in the denominator of our fractions. So what we want to do is call rationalizing the denominator. In this case, we want to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 7. If we do that, that will get rid of the radical and the denominator. So you really have square root of 7 squared. And on top, 5 square root of 7. Now, the square root of 7 squared just gives you 7, and on top, 5, square root of 7. Since those are not the same kind of terms, we really can't multiply 5 times square root of 7. That'll give us a decimal. If you look at our answer choices, they're not in decimal, so we want to keep it as 5 square root of 7 divided by 7. Okay, so that's choice C. Another way you can solve this problem is... Put this into your calculator, 5 divided by the square root of 7, and you'll get some decimal number. If you do the same thing for all these answer choices, you want to see which one gives you that same decimal answer. So that's another way to solve this type of problem. Our next example says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to 6 square root of 27 divided by 3 square root of 3? Now you could solve this like the previous one where you want to rationalize the denominator. So you multiply the bottom by the square root of 3 and the top by the square root of 3 and that will get rid of the radical on the bottom. In this problem they want you to test that you know the square root of 27 over the square root of 3 is the same as the square root of 27 divided by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. So you can split up this problem, 6 divided by 3 times the square root of 27 over the square root of 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And remember we can change this to square root of 27 over 3. Or square root of 9 give you 2 times 3, which gives you 6. So answer choice B. So there's two rules. This one with the division, you can make it into one radical. If I had square root of 3 times square root of 11, you can make that to square root of 33, where you multiply them together to make one radical. So that's another property that you should know. Now this one says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to 2 divided by 2 minus the square root of 3. Now when we have something like this, again we don't want a radical in the denominator of a fraction. And this one we need to multiply by the conjugate, which is going to be 2 plus the square root of 3. So I just changed the minus that was in the middle to plus. I multiply the top by the same thing. I multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. I'm really just multiplying by 1 which doesn't really change the equation. So if I do that on top, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. On the bottom, I have 2 times 2. I'm just going to do FOIL. Gives me 4. And then 2 times square root of 3 gives you 2 square root of 3. And negative square root of 3 times 2 is negative 2 square root of 3. And negative 3 and negative square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives you negative square root of 3 squared. So the top is going to stay the same. On the bottom, notice that 2 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3 gives you 0. And then the square root of 3 squared is just 3. So I'm going to end up with 4 minus 3 on the bottom which is just 1, so 4 plus 2 squared of 3 over 1, or just 4 plus 
2 square root of 3. All right, so answer choice B. So remember this one, to solve this one, we had to do multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. We saw when we do that, the square roots cancel out. You know, the square root of 3 is up to 0, and then you're squaring the square root of 3 at the end, so you have no more radicals on the bottom than just on top. Now all we have to do is switch the sign in the middle from 2 minus the square root of 3 to 2 plus the square root of 3. This is multiplying by the conjugate. So this one says 5 divided by the square root of 3 plus 7 divided by the square root of 5 is equal to what? And it's like any other fraction, we need a common denominator. So we make it square root of 3 times the square root of 5, which is the same as the square root of 15. Just multiply 3 times 5. Now if we do that, Okay, so square root of 15 would be our common denominator. If I have 5, I need the square root of 5 on top in order to balance that out. So 5 square root of 5, or 15, plus 7 square root of 3, over the square root of 15. Okay, so on the bottom of the first one, you're basically multiplying the top and bottom by square root of 5. And the second one, you're multiplying by square root of 3 on top and bottom. Now, once we have a common denominator, we just add the numerators together. So 5 square root of 5 plus 7 square root of 3 divided by square root of 15. Okay, so that's going to be our answer choice, B. All right, and this problem says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to x squared minus 3 divided by x minus the square root of 3, or x not equal to the square root of 3? All right, and this one, you might be tempted to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. But notice we've got an x squared on top. And notice we have an x squared on top, and that's going to cause some issues here. So on this one, we have x squared minus 3, uh, the difference of squares should kind of pop into your head. So if I write that as x squared minus square root of 3 squared, I have my difference of two squares. The denominator stays the same. On the top, you can factor it as x plus the square root of 3 times x minus the square root of 3 divided by x minus square root of 3. So you have x minus square root of 3 on top and bottom. So that cancels out, leaving you just x plus the square root of 3. So answer choice C. So if you did this with the conjugate, I don't think it would actually work out because you end up with the x to the third power on top, and that wouldn't cancel out ever. You might have an equivalent expression, but it wouldn't match one of the answer choices. All right, so I hope this video helped you understand radicals a little bit better. Thanks.